While I know I say this about damn near everyone, I really think the Cleveland Cavaliers are the single most underrated team in the NBA. A core of four all-star caliber guys who are all 26 and under is something you really don't see too often. While I know their playoff exit was quite ugly, I think there is one move that may solve their problems, which I will get into later. But Cleveland has already made some moves to try and make the double big lineup work in 2024, so let's get right into it. Cleveland's marquee signing of the offseason was Miami Heat sniper Max Struess. Wing shooting and depth was desperately needed to improve the spacing in Cleveland, and Kobe Altman went in head first. Cleveland agreed to a four-year, $64 million deal with Struess, and while this may seem a bit overboard, similar guys like Joe Harris and Duncan Robinson signed for $475 and $590 respectively, and these years were also a few years back. Another thing you have to consider, which I also discussed in my Indiana video mainly with the Bruce Brown signing, is that mid to small market teams in cold Midwest cities are going to have to throw in a bit extra to lure in the guys that they want. Struess was the exact wing play Cleveland needed, and they got it. The next addition that Cleveland made also continued to address the wing shooting, and I can give you guys the full deal with Georges Niang as he has been on my team for the past couple years. Georges is an interesting player because sometimes you'll absolutely love him, but other times you'll completely hate him. Niang is a sniper and great spark plug who is liable to come in and drop two to three threes at any time. While this is great, his defensive deficiencies are also glaring, but with Mobley and or Allen behind him, I think Georges will be just what this team is looking for off the bench. Three year, $25 million deal is a pretty solid deal, I think. Maybe a tad of an overpay, but nothing bad whatsoever. Georges is also just like a great culture guy. I don't know if everyone remembers this, but like last year, he wasn't even here with Ben Simmons. He didn't even have the whole thing going on, but he was like, I don't even know how to explain what he was doing. He was basically just like trolling him and like standing in the, and you know what I mean? Like standing him up, man. George is a funny dude. Y'all will probably absolutely love him in Cleveland. Cleveland also did extend wing Karis LeVert on a two-year $32 million deal. I would really love this if this results in Karis moving into a six-man role, as I assume Cleveland eyed Max Struess as their fifth starter that they have been looking for. I think Karis would be an outstanding six-man who could come in and get some buckets for you when needed. We also saw outstanding three-point development from Karis last year, as prior to last year, he was a career 33% three-point shooter, and last year, he shot 39% from deep on similar volume. With the perimeter scoring and ball dominance of Donovan Mitchell and Darius Garland, I don't think we see Brooklyn or Indy Levert in Cleveland, but he could be outstanding in the role of a bench scorer. Now for the core. Having a core of two short guards and two tall centers who are all elite is just kind of funny to me. I think it can work as the offensive firepower of Garland and Mitchell can overcome the offensive limitations of Mobley and Allen, and the defensive prowess of Mobley and Allen can overcome the defensive liabilities that Garland and Mitchell are, but this is all given that the supporting cast fits the mold of what it needs to be, which I think Cleveland has now done. I love what Donovan Mitchell brings to the table. His playoff drop was pretty significant, but I'm not really that concerned long term. He is nearing his peak and has shown he can do it on the biggest stage before. I think to maximize his potential, notably in the playoffs when the court shrinks and the game slows down, you have to give up on this whole double big thing, which I'm about to fully discuss. Rumors of Mitchell not wanting to be in Cleveland are surfacing, and this is a really weird situation to me. With his player option, he is essentially on an expiring deal at the moment. If the rumors of Mitchell just wanting to be in New York are true and you're not a contender at the deadline, I think you have no other choice but to recoup whatever value you can rather than lose him for nothing. But if this is all New York media and Mitchell is open to an extension, you obviously do it. I'm not exactly sure of what his number will be due to his All-NBA appearance last season, but whatever it is, you do it. I think a team headlined by Mobley and Garland could be very good, but I think a team headlined by Mitchell, Garland, and Mobley could be championship level. If you didn't notice, I left out a name there. While I love Jared Allen's game, I think this whole double big experiment needs to end. Mobley is filling out more, and let's be honest here, he's plenty big enough to play the five in the modern NBA, but I think unless Evans somehow becomes a league average three-point shooter, you just have to break this up. This lack of spacing will lead to ugly playoff exits like the one we just saw with the Knicks. While this exit may come in the second round instead of the first, who really cares? As someone who's been on the bad end of some of the worst roster construction in NBA history, I promise you spacing is needed in the playoffs. It would be one thing if you had no other rim protector, but you literally have a 22-year-old playing defensive player of the year level defense already. Not only this, but you could probably also get a really solid return for Allen that could help you both today and later. This is a 25-year-old former all-star rim protecting big that's making $20 million a year for the next two years. And one thing you also have to consider with removing Jared Allen is the addition by subtraction that it will do for Cleveland offensively. 
Removing Allen would open up the game offensively for legitimately everyone, but the main beneficiary to me would be Evan Mobley. Mobley has put up a relatively efficient 15 to 16 a night during his first two years as a generally unpolished offensive player while playing alongside a non-shooting big. Garland's elite playmaking and Donovan Mitchell's gravity with snipers on the wings could result in Mobley averaging 20 plus a night on similar or better efficiency. You also have to keep in mind that regardless if Allen is there or not, Mobley is still only 22 years old. Pretty much no matter what happens with this Cleveland team, they will be a force in the Eastern Conference for years to come. Donovan Mitchell is already an All-NBA player, and I think Garland and Mobley both have perennial All-NBA potential. But some crucial moments and decisions are coming, and I think Cleveland has done pretty close to as good as it can do with keeping their core. I think a Jared Allen trade would prevent an ugly playoff situation like last season, and thus likely increase the chance of Donovan Mitchell wanting to stay. But I do think there's a world where Cleveland's roster adjustments work perfectly, and the core four in Cleveland lives happily ever after. But only time will tell. But again, I think regardless that, I, I mean, hey, listen, this might be a crazy prediction to you right now. I think Cleveland moves into that upper echelon in the Eastern Conference. Do they move into the Boston tier? Boston, I mean, Milwaukee tier? I don't know, but I think they're definitely, I mean, I you know, I think they're definitely in the conversation with Philly coming from a Philly fan. I think they're definitely solidified in that second tier in the Eastern Conference this season, if not shocking the world and jumping into that first. Again, what you guys have to consider is that Evan Mobley is only 22, Darius Garland is only 23. These guys are still improving and improving and just got their first playoff experience. Man, I, I do think the sky's the limit for this team. I think there's a world where, again, where Evan Mobley can become a league average three-point shooter. He's still very young. He can still try and add that to his game. And I mean, he's, I mean, he's shooting him. You know, I mean, he's not Ben Simmons. He's not not shooting him. So, you know, I mean, he's clearly trying to do something there. But, I, you know, I really like this Cleveland team regardless. I know I've been really, you know, harping on the whole Jared Allen trade thing, which I do think, I, again, man, I, as I said, I think it's necessary. I think, you know... I think you do it now because, uh, you know, with this whole Mitchell thing lingering, you know, regardless of if right now he's like, oh yeah, like, I, like I, I, I have no reason to leave Cleveland, even if he's truly like happy in Cleveland right now, another ugly playoff exit. And you know what I mean? You know what I mean? He's from New York, New York, you know what I mean? Like it, it, it's a real thing. It's a real thing that he wanted to be in New York, and I think, you know, hey, I mean, again, removing Allen would just open up, it would open up the game offensively for Mitchell and Garland even more, too, and Mitchell was already putting up an efficient 28 a night last season. I mean, he was making All-NBA. Again, you know, I think, you know, if there were to be a shocker team to, like, make the finals, like, a shocker team that's not, you know, again, like, like the teams that I'd put, you know, in the East, it would really be, I mean... I feel like really anyone outside of Boston, Milwaukee right now, or in Miami, in Miami, you know, even if, uh, you know, I mean, assuming they get named, but even if they don't, probably, you know, probably those three will be like, not a shocker. I think everyone outside of there would be a shocker. And if I had to pick someone, it would be this Cleveland team. Again, I think, you know, hey, I, I, I mean, if they can make it work, it, it's just, it's just with the playoff basketball, with the court shrinking and, you know what I mean? The court shrinking, the game slowing down, two non-shooting bigs, modern day game, uh, the doubling, the helping, ah, you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, you know, it's, it, it's not fun, you know, especially if they were to run into a team like a Boston, which we, you know, I mean, we saw it with, you know, from a Philly fan, we saw it with us last year with, you know, I mean, like PJ Tucker, uh, you know, I mean, like in the dunker spot and like, you know, how that spacing allowed them to essentially, you know, have Tatum meet and beat on the perimeter. And this is also in large part due to the lack of offensive creativity of Doc Rivers, because, you know, the amount of times where you just see four guys standing on the perimeter with Joel with the ball and then he has Tatum meeting him on the perimeter. Horford then meeting him, you know, like in the paint. And then you have, uh, you know, Rob Williams sliding off PJ Tucker to help. Like, you know, that's the kind of situation, obviously they're not running the same kind of offense with post-ups and stuff, but stuff like that with a team like Boston picking up a guy like a Chris Saps Porzingis, um, you know, again, I, I think, you know, it, it would make for a really, really ugly playoff exit. And even with a team like the Knicks, you know, I mean, like the Knicks aren't, you know, Boston level paint defense, but they're a very gritty team, you know, with the rim protecting big and Mitchell Robinson, gritty physical team, you know, Tom Thibodeau team, you know what I mean? And like, even like Miami, you know what I mean? Bam out of bio. Uh, you know, their, their defense isn't looking, you know, as scary as it has, you know what I mean? Like when they had like PJ Tucker and, you know, Jim, I mean, Jim, they solved Jimmy obviously, but you know what I mean? Like, like they're, I mean, you know, like, like they're going to be a great defensive team because of Eric Spolstra and Bam Adebayo. But you know, I mean, I, you know, it might not be, but like Milwaukee, 
Dude, y'all run into Milwaukee with Giannis and Brooke in them and Drew on the perimeter and all that. Like, stuff could get ugly real, real fast. That's all I'm going to say. That's why I don't know, man. I, I, I like all the talent. Um, You know, it, it's a lot of talent. But, you know, uh, you know, and this is the thing with the Sixers also. It's like, you know, you, you can have all this talent, theoretically, but if it doesn't fit together on the court, it's not going to really end well. But... That's going to wrap this one up. If y'all enjoyed it, please like it up, sub the channel, turn on that noti bell, comment your thoughts down below. You know, do you feel like this double big lineup can really, really work? Do you agree with me? Like, you know what I mean? Like, they kind of need to move on. And again, man, y'all could get something crazy, too. Like, like I mean, I mean, I don't know about something crazy, but y'all could probably get two solid role players in a pick or two. I'm not going to lie. And that might be, hey, I, I mean, listen, it depends on, you know, who, what, when you know what hey, hey, hey. but i think y'all could get a really solid return that could help y'all you know what i mean recoup some of those assets that you gave up in the mitchell trade you know a whole bunch of stuff um and real quick i, I mean I, I know i already did the leg sub noti out thing shout out my guy monty bates facts 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 i mean i don't know you know what he becomes in the NBA. He could be just like a like a bench, you know, a bench score guy uh, for y'all, which would be cool. You know, you got, you know, secondary playmaker, like a guy like Ricky Rubio, Dean Wade, you know, a Coro, uh, you know, I mean, like his, his, his three point shot, you know, developed like a little bit, a little bit, you know, again, like, you know, he, he he's not in that position. I, I did it. I, I don't really know, man. Yeah, I, I, I mean, a Coro's three point shot is developing, which I guess is all you can really ask for. But I don't think he's going to be, you know, the, the fifth starter that you guys thought he was going to be. Which is what it is. I mean, I I don't really know, man. Again, I think y'all are in a great spot. Like, sub, noti, out, peace.